Hey guys, welcome back to Forza Horizon 3 here on Box 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 Gaming. My name is Justin, and today things are going to be a little bit different because unfortunately I had a power outage while I was recording this, ses this session of uh, Forza Horizon 3. Now, thankfully, the Windows 10 game DVR actually uh, saved it. Um, I, it's, actually, it's not corrupted. The video works totally fine. Now, the same cannot be said for Audacity. I did try and recover the audio file. However, it hey, did not work Rex. and uh, I just I wasn't able to get the live commentary back so uh, quite a bit They're happened moved, though so it was a, it was a, about a 45 Somewhere minute recording session which I've now condensed down to just 14 minutes uh, but you can see we uh, first went to go get a drive guitar uh, to hire someone new Ar uh, Aristot Aristot I'm not sure which uh, and we're in the Datsun and unfortunately, he's in a C-Class Jaguar. C-Class Jaguar. Um, and I've completely missed that turn just about. But look, it doesn't even matter. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. I don't, is there something about this car that causes the drive guitars to all show up in Jaguars? And you can see, I'm actually sticking to the road here. And the guy that I'm racing is not. He's just, he's just cutting through. Uh, cutting ac across the circuit and stuff like that, uh, whereas I'm actually taking the road, and I'm still just completely destroying him. So, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're looking for really, really easy uh, recruitment races and stuff like that, uh, go ahead and pick up this Datsun, because uh, for whatever reason, the game just puts you up against high C-class Jaguars in every single head-to-head -head race. Very strange stuff, very strange stuff. So uh, we won that extremely easily. Uh, that guy was nowhere to be uh, found after I saw him trying to cut the course. Uh, that did level us up though, so that's gonna give us a wheel spin. Uh, looks like we could get a Range, Ro Range Rover Sport SVR. And we do have the VIP pass now, so it's 100,000 credits. 100,000 credits in one wheel spin. Absolutely amazing stuff. Uh, was really happy uh, to have the VIP pass finally working. Uh, and I have been saving up. I, I have fired the F1 like. Uh, he, he got fired because he was the lowest level person. Uh, Aristot is the second level lowest level person that I have, though. Um, and so, yeah, he's, he's... Whoa, and I'm doing something else. I just came flying off a cliff. Did a wonderful little barrel roll in the Datsun and landed right side up. Uh, I believe I now have damage off. And that's because of the cracked windscreen. The cracked windscreen is kind of annoying from cockpit view. Uh, but previously, in previous videos, I had the damage set to cosmetic only. So there's no change in that regard as far as, uh, you know, I was never affected by the damage anyway. Uh, however, now uh, I just won't have to deal with the cracked windscreen stuff. So that's good. Uh, so it looks like this is a... Um, uh, obviously, we're using the Warthog from Halo. Uh, this, this must be a bucket list challenge. I believe it was a bucket list challenge. Uh, and we just have to follow this route. Interestingly enough, this is uh, the opposite of the route that you drive when you're uh, first starting out the game and they give you that, like, arena truck. Uh, you c you're coming down this hill and there's other trucks around you and then you come out onto the beach and then uh, you pick your car. Uh, and uh, it, this is basically the reverse of that circuit. Now, uh, I thought I was supposed to go to the right there, but it's saying to just just beeline it straight across this field. So I, so I oblige. I, <laughs> I say okay. Uh, now this car is pretty powerful. It gets up to speed pretty well. Handles the jumps pretty well, as you can see. Aside from when you're, see, I think I was actually going to miss that tree there. I don't think I actually needed to rewind uh, there. I think I was just going to go to the right of the tree, but uh, rewind it because I thought I was going to hit it. Of course, uh, still going across this field. Have not gotten back onto a road yet, but it does look like we're coming up on one. Uh, this car is strange sounding. To me, something from the Halo universe would probably be electric powered rather than, uh, you know, petrol powered or gasoline powered, depending on what country you're from. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I've got him. Oh, cock. I've uh, cocked that up real good. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rewind that. Yeah, and, and then there's just a reminder of how poorly that was going. I actually did a tumble. Uh, I was a bit aggressive coming onto this asphalt circuit, so uh, this time slow it down into third gear and just uh, rather not pick up any sort of air time off that uh, transition onto the road. Uh, so we've got 50 seconds left to get to our checkpoint, and you can see it is up ahead. Not far away, so we should have no problems getting there in time. Now I am actually going to stick to the roads. Uh, I probably could just cut straight across, but I don't know what kind of trees and foliage are going to be. 
uh, in, in between myself and that checkpoint, and I'm having a really hard time seeing the road because of how big the dash is on this Warthog. Uh, obviously, you can see directly in front of the steering wheel, it just comes you know, straight up, and the car is so high as well, so you can't really see the road that's directly in front of you. And when you're driving through like jungles like this, oh, I've completely missed that corner and got straight into a tree. Probably going to need a small application of the brakes heading into this left-hander, which we do so. Uh, and you can see it, it, the suspension on it's really soft. It really leans back when you get on the throttle, which is, which is nice. Uh, I should have gotten this car for free as part of the Ultimate Edition, but apparently you don't get it unless you own or have played a Halo game before. And I don't think I've played a Halo game on this account. Um, my girlfriend does own the Master Chief Collection, but I don't know if I've actually done anything with it. I'm not, I'm not really sure. So, uh, we've got a, another bucket list event here involving the Koenigsegg Regera, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's the Regera. Uh, no, this is the Koenigsegg 1, which I always thought was the 1-1, one, one, the 1-1, one one, you know, the 1-1, one because one, it's got the 1-1 one to one power to, to weight ratio, but I guess it's just called the Koenigsegg 1. Uh, which is uh, kind of a boring name, to be totally honest. I actually like One to One as a better name, or One One. Uh, I think that's a more interesting name than just calling it The One. Uh, it makes it sound like it's Neo from The Matrix or something like that. It's not that good. Uh, but uh, we've got to reach our destination in a minute and ten seconds, and then that's it. Yeah, I think, I think this is just one of those uh, bucket lists where you just kind of drive there and try to beat the time. So pretty straightforward, we're onto a two-lane highway now, passing by a bus, and getting up to speed now. Six gear at 210 miles an hour, or thereabouts, and I do believe this is actually a seven-speed gearbox. Uh, you can see almost 250 miles an hour heading into this right-hander, dropping it down into fifth, but even still not quite enough, losing our skill chain there. Uh, fifth gear for the left-hander, no problems there, weaving through the traffic and trying to get a good line through these very slight corners that you don't really need to slow down to. Uh, we do have a bus coming up up ahead, and unfortunately, I thought I was going to understeer uh, past the bus, but I didn't understeer quite as much as I expected. Back on the throttle now, after the rewind, eight seconds remaining, and there's the finish line, though, with just about five seconds remaining on the clock. If we do reach our destination, pick up uh, 5,000 credits for our efforts and 3,300 XP. We're about 3,400 XP for, away from our next level up, and I do believe we just got a festival expansion. Uh, so you see now why I, I still wanted to show this footage, even though I lost hey, the commentary for it. Because, again, quite a bit of stuff happened. I did these bucket lists, which are, which are quite cool. Uh, you know, you get an opportunity to drive cars that you don't actually own. And then also I had a festival expansion. And then at some point here, I believe I'm going to have my first race in the Datsun. So I've decided for this one to level up Byron Bay. Um, all three of my festivals are currently at level three, so this is gonna be the first one that I'm gonna take to level four as I do an, uh, a handbrake <laughs> into the uh, into the festival parking, which I always do. I don't know about you guys. Let me know if you guys do that too. But every time I drive back to a festival, I do an, I do a handbrake 180 into the, uh, into the area, so. Uh, this is going to be our first level four festival, of course, and we are, are of course, going to pick up a free car. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. We've got the Audi R8 V10 Plus. I believe that's a Ferrari 458. Uh, and then the Nissan GTR and the Lexus LFA, the Ford GT, and also the, uh, I believe that's a, a, a Zonda down at the end. Uh, or or I, I know it's, I'm pretty sure it's a Pagani. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm basically sold on either the Lexus or the uh, GTR. Uh, those are the two that really interest me. Uh, now, it, it, worth pointing out, none of these cars are free. So I actually can't even afford the Pagani. I can't afford the rest of them. I could just about afford the Ford GT and the Lexus LFA, uh, but it's 10% off. The LFA normally 400,000 credits. It's only 360,000. I have 361 thousand credits i've decided to go for the lfa it's just so sexy i had to do it i, I really like the lfa it's it's a cool car um you know it's outrageously expensive and not nearly as fast as it should be um but you know it, at below a certain speed you know it just it, it's a track car that's really what it seems like to me now I, I really liked the white on the lfa so i was switching back and forth between the two of them tried to figure out which one uh which one i wanted sorry 
I, uh, I'm doing this actually while working, so, <laughs> so I'm a little bit tired at the moment, but, uh, so I, I'm going with the white LFA, and we're gonna go ahead and pimp this thing out later, actually, uh, because I currently have 1,000 credits to my name, so, uh, we need to do some races here, we need to get some money under our belt, uh, I've decided to bust out the NSX again, it's been a while since we've driven our, uh, kind of chromed out NSX, so we're gonna do this jungle speedway sprint, in the rain, in the Acura NSX, or Honda NSX for, for you guys. Let's let's call it a Honda NSX. I'm, I, I hate calling it Acura, to be totally honest. So, uh, already uh, down into eighth position, actually. I believe that's a, is that the Subaru? Yeah, it's a Subaru BRZ that goes past us in that kind of Prisma black color. Uh, sat behind, I believe that's an R33 that initialization's driving car is driving and lots of wheel spin. Remember, this car is naturally aspirated, no turbo in this NSX. I left the stock engine, didn't bolt the turbo onto it, just upgraded it as much as I possibly could without adding a supercharger or turbocharger. Uh, so it's, uh, it's actually not very good in the rain because uh, you get so much power in low, at, at low RPMs and low gears and stuff like that. So quite difficult to manage, to be totally honest. So we're up into fifth now as we got past that skyline and uh, short shifting into fifth and getting past, I believe that was a uh, 350Z or a 370Z. Uh, moving up the left-hand side of the RX-8. Now there's another NSX just ahead of us. And then whoever's in first place is quite a ways up the road. Missing my apex a bit for the left-hander there. Funky Disco 23 currently uh, just ahead of us again in the NSX, but we got a great run out of there. He's going to squeeze us to the right-hand side, uh, but we do manage to get by. And actually, that's our new recruit, Aristot, who is currently uh, leading this race in that skyline, but we are catching up to him at quite a rate of speed here. Uh, pretty tight right-hand corner coming up, though. We're going to have to slow it down and get it into second gear, but that's still not enough, actually as we make contact with the outside barrier at the exit of the corner. Uh, that allows Aristot in that skyline to get back through. A uh, bit of wheel spin as we turn in while our wheels are still dipped on the grass there, so uh, that's unfortunately not gonna help us. Once again, uh, dipping the wheels on the grass through that right-hander uh, again. 80% uh, now through this race. Uh, Left-hander, just looks like uh, three corners remain. We got this right-hander, then a fairly tight, long left-hander. This is probably going to be third gear. Yeah, down into third gear. Uh, Understeering out a little bit wide, and then uh, lots of oversteer as I get on the throttle again in these wet conditions. But it looks like a pretty significant gap to the car behind, so we're going to come home in first position. No problems there. And there was quite a bit of frame stuttering in this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it in this video while I've got, uh, while I've got a minute. Um, I did try knocking this game down to 30 FPS, and that does stabilize things quite a bit. It does seem that this game just inherently is not very happy at 60 FPS. However, in cockpit view, driving at 250 miles per hour, 30 FPS is not enough. Um, so I, I'm going to stick with the 60 FPS and just deal with the stuttering, because uh, I find that to be actually more manageable than dr just driving at 30 FPS without stutters. So we do level up as a result of that race, so we are going to get a another spin here, another VIP spin. Uh, Microbito winning a crossbow seven hours previous, but we're going to go ahead and just win 10,000 credits, uh, which is very unfortunate because, again, we are pretty much broke after buying that LFA, and we could really use some cash. So that is going to do it for this video. This is the only one that's going to have post-commentary. We'll be back to the regular format with the live commentary for the next uh, next video. Uh, thank you so much for the support on the series. For those of you guys that are watching, there's not tons of you, but you guys seem to really like it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.